So let us look at some simple yoga movements or yoga postures to keep our joints healthy, to keep our spine healthy. This is for people who are not regularly doing intense yoga sessions. So just to keep the body in a good maintenance mode so that your joints are healthy, they are mobile and your spine is also you know, flexible. So, these, so let's start with working with our neck joint, the topmost joint of our body, the neck joint. So simply turn your chin gently to your right. Hold it for a few moments. When you have turned your chin to the right, take a deep breath in. Hold the breath in for a few moments and then release. So movements and postures and actually doing pranayama at the same time. Now you can turn your chin towards the left. Again, take a deep breath in. Hold the breath inside for a few moments. And then release the breath. Bring your chin to its normal position. So you can do this a few times towards the right and then towards the left. Now the next movement, movement of the neck joint is taking a deep breath in. Lungs are filled in, drop the chin to your chest. So you will feel the stretch at the back of your neck and you are holding the breath inside. Hold for a few moments. Then releasing the breath, bring your chin to its normal position. Now the other movement, so you are now lifting, going to lift the chin up. So again you take a slow and deep breath in. Lift the chin up, hold the breath inside your lungs for a few moments and then you release the breath and drop your chin to its normal position. So we have done two movements of the neck, towards the right, towards the left and then towards the chest and then lifting the chin up. So now the third movement of the neck joint, drop your right ear to the shoulder. You will feel a stretch on your connecting muscles on your shoulder, left shoulder and the neck. Hold for a few moments and then release. Bring the chin to its normal position. Now you drop your left ear to the shoulder. Hold for a few moments and then release. Now from the neck joint, we bring our attention to the next joint, the shoulder joint. So take your palms onto your shoulders. First stretch the elbows backward. And then you bring the elbows forward and join them. Take, take them back again. And then bring them forward and join them. And now taking your elbows to the side, you start to rotate the shoulder joint externally. So you take the elbows back and bring them in the front. And then you start this movement. You can probably do it eight times. Now, the rotation in the opposite direction. So you bring the elbows back and then bring them in the front. Internal rotation of your shoulder joint. Release. Now, we still remain with our shoulder joint. So we will do what we do as a cricketer in bowling action. So you take the left arm and move it like a bowler's movement. 
or you can call it a swimmer's movement as well to the other side on the other side so you're now the right arm you are moving it so it's rotating your shoulder joint Now you can do it the other way up. Like a backstroke in swimming. release so from the neck joint we move to the shoulder joint now we'll come to our wrist joint so interlace your wrists lift them right above the head it's working on your shoulder joint as well but the wrist joint is also active as you turn the interlaced fingers or interlaced palms up towards the ceiling hold for a few moments And then you can bring the palm in the front. And now you keep the fingers interlaced, but just start to point them downwards. Your forearms will become a little active. The wrist also active. And then you start to rotate the wrists internally. Internal rotation or you whatever you call the clockwise anti-clockwise rotation. Rotate the wrists. Internal. And then you rotate the wrist the other way around. In the opposite direction. Release the rotation of the wrist. We will remain with the wrist joint again. So now taking your right palm. In your left palm, just hold the fingers and gently bring them or pull them towards your chest. And then you are pushing the fingers down so that your wrist joint stretches. To the other side, take your right palm in your left, pull it. And then you push the fingers down so that you can feel the stretch here, right on your left wrist. You can do it a few times if you wish. You can also do work on the finger joints. You're just pushing the fingers so that your knuckle joint is a little activated down on the other side. We do this. At work, so we don't really need to work on this joint a little, but you can just, you know, kind of wrench your wrist a little, bring the fingers in, close them tightly, and then release. Now, from this joint, we move to a lower joint. We move to our hip joint. Now, hip joint has three movements. So, when you move the hip joint, when you lift the leg up, the left leg up. It is the flexion of your hip joint. And when you take the leg back, it is the extension of your hip joint. So just do it a few times. Flexion, extension. Flexion, extension. Flexion, extension. Release to the other side. The right foot, flexion, extension. Flexion. Of your hip joint and extension of your hip joint. You can do it a few times so that your hip joint starts to become activated. Now you can work a little more on so this was one movement of the hip joint. The other movement is adduction and abduction. So you take it to one side, lift the leg, and then you bring the leg to the other side. So this is one more movement of the hip We do it with the other leg also. So lifting it to the side 
and then bring it into Now we move work on another movement of the hip joint, which is the internal rotation. So, so you're just moving your foot inwards. This is internally rotating your hip joint, and then you rotate it the other side. Just bring your foot in and take the foot out. So this is the internal rotation and the external rotation of the hip joint. We do it with both our legs. External rotation and internal rotation. External rotation, internal rotation. So we have just started to work on the hip joint. We will do a little more work on the hip joint. So now we get seated on the mat. Extend your leg right in the front. Join your feet together, your toes to toes, your heel to heel. And you start pulling it inwards towards the plane of the body. Bring it as inward as possible. Hold the feet in your palms. And then you just move the knees up and down. This will start to loosen up your hip joint. Open it up. And then if you are able to push the knees further down and bend the elbows and press the inner thigh muscle, but the konasana, so you can lift the chin up, it will also open up the hip joint. So these were a few movements or exercises that you know work on our hip joint, we will now move to the ankle and knee joint. So one of the best way to work on it is to be seated in Vajrasana. Vajrasana extends your ankle joint and your knee joint. So some, some of you may find it difficult to sit comfortably because you may feel a little pain in the ankle. If Just keep a couple of cushions with you. If you want to, if you want to give a little comfort to your ankle joint, just put a cushion under your ankles so that your ankle joint is. And if you still find being seated in Vajrasana a little difficult, you can put a cushion between your hips and your calves. So that will, you know, reduce the work on the knee joint. This way, if you sit, and if you sit for a little longer time, then it will. Work on your knee joint and ankle joint. We give you a side with you. Vajrasana to be seated on your heels, with your hips on your heels. Now, some people want to do it, extend it a little more. So, for extension of it a little more, you can just park your feet behind and allow your hips to sink in. That extends the ankle a little more and the knee a little more. But you need to move towards it gradually after you start feeling comfortable in Vajrasana. Then you can move to Virasana. So this was, these are a couple of things you can do for your ankle joint. The other way to work on the ankle joint also is to straighten your leg and move your, rotate your ankle inward and then rotate it in the other way. Just a few times every day so that your joints are maintained and they are healthy. With the left foot, external rotation and then internal rotation. So this is also something you can do for your ankle joint. Now we come to other you know, important part of the body, the spine. All of our motor functions actually depend upon how healthy our spine is. The spine has three parts. One is the uh, lumbar part, which is the lowest, and the spine bends the maximum from there. Then you have the thoracic part, which is the middle, and then the cervical part. So I'll show you a couple of things that you can do to exercise different parts of the spine. So let's work first on the lowest part of the spine. We work with Bhujangasana. So you bring your palms by the side of the chest, lying on the mat with your stomach 
or your abdomen onto the mat, your chin onto the floor. And you press the palms gently onto the floor, allow your torso to lift up, move it to Bhujangasana. Now Bhujangasana is a posture which works on the lowest part of your spine. First you will be able to hold it for a little time and then you can gradually increase the duration of your hold. Now if you don't find it easy to you know, keep your abdomen onto the floor or your waist onto the floor, you can again use the cushion so that the, there is not much pressure on your arms and you can increase the duration of your stay in the posture. Something like this. So Bhujangasana works on the lowest part of the spine. Now you release, still lying on your abdomen, your forehead onto the floor, you can lift your ankles up, pull the ankles, and then your other movement is now pushing the ankles into your palms, outward and higher. So the movement of the ankles is outward and higher. Just lifting up, and that lifts up, your torso as well, but your body curves from the middle part, the thoracic part of the spine. So it is called Dhanurasana. And do it to the extent you feel comfortable with it. And then release. And then you can just gently roll yourself over on the mat. Bring your feet close to the hips, lift the waist up, interlace your fingers underneath the hips, rotate your shoulders a little and lift the waist up, Keep to Bandhasana. This works more on the cervical part of the spine. You can see that the spine is active, most more on the cervical part. So Bhajangasana for the lumbar. Then you do Dhanurasana for the thoracic and Ketu Bandhasana for the cervical part. Release. If you still want to work a little more on the middle part of the spine, the thoracic, you can also do what we call the Ushtrasana. So, being on your knees, lift the right arm up, curve it. Bring to the heel, lift the left arm up, curve it, and you push the navel forward. Drop the head a little backward, and you hold this posture, curve the spine from the middle. Not necessary to do it, but just an additional posture if you want to work on the spine. Release. Now just to Move the spine sideways a little, twist it sideways. You can use a chair. Being seated on the chair, you can just, just to fasten your legs, you can just, or to block your legs, you can put your legs like this, but you can put it also like that. Bring your right palm behind, hold the Chair from behind, you can use the left palm to hold the lower part of the chair and you twist sideways using your palms. As you turn sideways, take a deep breath in. Hold the breath inside and then release. Move to the other side. Now you're taking your right palm across, holding the chair across your left knee, taking the left palm behind, twisting sideways towards the left, look over your left shoulder. Again, take a deep breath, allow the spine to be twisted, and then slowly release. So these were a few movements, few postures, you kriyas, whatever you call them, to keep your spine and your joints healthy. 
hope you will find this useful in your daily routine